Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are just going to give people a few more minutes. They're probably just finishing up their dishes and dinner. Hi, Ms. DeFranco. <laughs> finishing my dinner. <laughs> This is not a cooking night. Do you want to share the screen? Beautiful. Hello, everyone. Okay, well, it's 702. So we'll add a few people as we go along. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone for joining us this evening. Um, as we I think we have come to learn it's definitely um, a combined effort and a group effort uh, to be able to provide, you know, just in person and when we're doing remote learning, obviously it works a lot better when we're working together as a team. Um, so I'd like to thank Mr. Grassi, Mr. Rollison, and Ms. DeFranco for um, putting this presentation together. They will be, they are our expert panel. Um, I am by no means an expert, um, but definitely learning. It's been an interesting year, even as an administrator, um, having to do, you know, staff meetings online and provide staff with PD, you know, and communicate with the students. Uh, we've definitely had to go outside our comfort zones and uh, be very creative but uh luckily you know, that's that's the nature of teachers is that we are very creative and so i feel like we have been um we've been a lot this year as well as uh supporting your students so just a few things before we start um it is being though the presentation is being recorded uh because i know a few people couldn't make it and they were hoping that maybe we could share um, the presentation with them. So we are um, going to be recording this. Um, we'd ask that you please put your um, any questions that you have in the chat and then we'll go through them as we go along or maybe towards the end, depending on, um, on if they're directly connected to um, the actual discussion at the time. And um, just again, a few other things just to mention that, um, you know, we're definitely encouraging parents to keep up with the routine, you know, to wake up and, uh, you know, pretend that they're going to school, get them dressed, um, have breakfast at the same time, have them, you know, have that little downtime before starting their day. Um, and we, you know, recommend dress code if possible, even just the tops, just because again, it just, it'll make things easier when we do go back in person. And it makes the, the you know, the children feel responsible and, and ready to learn. So we definitely recommend um, keeping up with that same routine. Uh, we know we have encouraged students to obviously put their camera on just because I know myself, it's hard when you're when you're talking to a, just a black screen. Um, so you kind of appreciate that, that little bit of eye contact. So we do encourage students to put their cameras on. We also know that that's not always possible. Some are a little, um, you know, a, a little, nervous about that and aren't comfortable and, and we understand that and even if the students just put it on you know when they are responding to a question or just at the beginning so they can say hi to their um, to their teacher and, and their friends um other things that we are um are mentioning just uh we, you know we completely recognize that this is not easy um there were so many memes that uh that i've seen over the last well several months about you know, parents being the, the teachers at home. And, uh, you know, we definitely recognize that it's it's not easy. Um, you know, even with myself, I've been a principal for many years and uh, teaching my my own children is, is a challenge. And I have all the, the tricks in, in up my sleeve and I still struggle teaching my own uh, children at times. So we recognize the challenge that uh, that the remote learning brings. Um, but the best thing to do is, you know, to, to realize and, and connect with other parents and get, 
you know, get their input. What, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? Just know that we're all in this together and definitely to communicate with your, um, your child's teacher. I think that's, um, and the school and including myself and uh, Ms. DeFranco. If there's any issues, we had a lot of parents reach out about logins or about devices or about Zoom. And, you know, we've been able to, um, to resolve a lot of the issues. And I know Mr. Rollison, I, <laughs> he is our All Saints IT guy. I have sent him a number of emails and he's uh, connected to, um, with parents and, and help support. So again, there's always a solution to the problem, like I tell the kids, and we can uh, work together on that. But the biggest thing is to communicate what the issues are, and then we can figure them out collectively. So on that note, uh, I will pass it over to Ms. DeFranco and uh, to begin. Great, thank you, Ms. Obey. So good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm actually surprised at how the numbers are climbing. I think we're at 45, that's great. Um, so we are gonna go over a few of the basic features of various platforms that our teachers have been using with your, student, with your children. Um, and I encourage you, if you have any questions as we're going through, please type them in the chat and uh, we'll try to field as many questions as we can. Um, I did have a couple of videos, but then I thought it might be better if we just show you, like navigate ourselves. So just feel free to stop us at any time, even if you want to chime in, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining us tonight. We'll, we'll keep this short. I know uh, it's probably for some of you, you haven't had dinner yet. And for some of you, you're ready for uh, sort of to wind down. So um, I just thought that um, I know that Ms. Obey has sent out uh, via blast. Um, tips for parents when working remotely with their children at home. Uh, so I thought I would just go over a few that I feel sort of are extremely important and that maybe we need to be reminded every now and then um, that learning from home for children does require a routine, even though we are in the comfort of, you know, in our living space. And sometimes we tend to forget that, but routine with children is so, so important. Um, so just, I'll go over really briefly. So set a schedule. So I know that our teachers um, at the onset of every week, um, set up a schedule either daily or weekly, just to give the kids an idea of what's coming up in the day or what's coming up in the next couple of days. So set a schedule with your children the same way you would as if they were actually leaving the house, right? So wake them up at the same time you would as if they were going to get ready for school and their bedtime should be the same and routines really shouldn't change because kids crave that, that structure. They do. They may not be able to tell us that they do, but we know that they do better academically and socially when there's structure and balance in their life. Um, so verify materials. So just ensure that they have everything that they need. Um, create a learning environment. So I've actually been on a few Zooms over the last couple of weeks and I've been able to see how some students are actually sitting, which what looks like a desk with, you know, uh, their pencils and their pens and their pencil case and their notebook. They have a lamp. I know other kids are sitting at the kitchen table. So just be aware of the environment that's around them that is conducive for learning. Um, every day create a plan. So think about what's coming up in the day and how you're going to tackle that with your student, with your children, especially if you're working from home, which most of us are. Uh, I know I am. It's, it's difficult for sure. doesn't matter the age of the children. You're always doing something to support them, right? So plan out your day in advance um, just to make it easier for yourself and for them. So plan out like what the meal might be at lunchtime, how much time they're going to have. Maybe you want to take them outside to get some fresh air. So kind of plan that um, ahead of time. Teach, <laughs> it says don't teach help. So you are your child's first teacher, best teacher. And uh, sometimes we do wanna do it for them. Just keep in mind that it's better to provide them with the strategies to become independent rather than doing it for them, which I know is easier. We just have to be mindful of how much help we're actually giving them. Um, complete all the work, complete as much work as you can. We are flexible with timelines. We realize that this is not a normal situation. So we're extremely understanding when things are coming back on time, just constantly be in communication with the teacher. So that way we know what's happening and that you know we're not worried in any way that there's something else going on. Um, communicate with the school. I just talked about that, very important. Center the child, not the work. So it matters more that the health and mental health and wellness of your child is, is centered and is calm and is creating a space for them where they feel happy and they're not stressed. That matters more than everything else. So that takes precedence over any of the work that we could give you. Um, identify specific barriers. And I was thinking about this question and I was thinking that time comes to mind. 
recognize when your child has had enough and it's okay to, to shut down for a few minutes. It's okay to leave a little early. Um, it's okay to take a brain break when it's not recess. Th those, th those are all okay. So recognize that in your child. Um, use the school resources. Um, I am in the building on odd days. And if you communicate with myself or with Ms. Obey, I'm happy to retrieve any items for you that you might need. So that can be, you know, you can email us separately and we can discuss that. Personalize the learning. I think the teachers have done a really good job of doing that. Uh, encourage growth mindset. So just, you know, we can do this. We got this. Uh, we're all in this together. Just keep that optimistic, positive sort of rah-rah look as we kind of hopefully get to the last couple of weeks of this and know where to go for what. So what do you need help with and how can we help you? Is it us that you need? Is it the classroom teacher? Is it a special education support that you need? Um, you know, is it a neighbor or a friend? Are you trying to connect your child with another child? You know, use us to help you to make those connections and to sort of support you in any way that we can. So with that, um, we're gonna go to slide three, which is Mr. Grassi. So Mr. Grassi is going to, um, so I'm gonna just give you my co-host. So Mr. Grassi, I just made you a co-host so you can share your screen. So Mr. Okay. Grassi is going to show you from a student view um, how to um, access Google Classroom from your perspective, like what you would see. Because what I would see as the educator would be a little bit different. So from this end, he's gonna log in as a student to show you and how to navigate some of the things that you can see, okay? So do you wanna share your screen? Yep. Beautiful, so let me stop share. Yeah, you have to stop. Yeah, there you go. Can everyone see that? Yep. yep. Okay. So we would type in, in the, the um, Taskbar up here, google.tcdsb.ca. And it would bring us to this login page. And you can enter your child's uh, student ID. Sorry. And their password. Okay, and this will pop up and you'll see um, this little waffle here in the corner. Click that and you'll be able to access the Google Classroom, which is called the Classroom. And from here, you'll see um, all your child's work that's been posted um, throughout um, the week or the day, um, different assignments. If you go here, okay, it can be weekly, However, the teachers decided to, to um, break it up. It could be weekly, daily, um, um, topic-wise, science, math. It depends on uh, what the teacher is, um, is doing. And um, if you'd like to send um, private comments uh, to the teacher, if you have a question, you can send that here and the teacher will get that in their uh, mailbox. Or um, you can add a uh, class comment um, here, as well as in the stream here. You can also ask questions where the students will be able to help uh, themselves maybe. Um, and what else can I show you? All right, can you go back and show um, where parents can send a, a message to the teacher directly? Sure. So if you just click any assignment in the, in the stream, uh, their work will show up, which is right here. And in here, you can send a uh, private comment. Uh, very simple. Hi, my son is having trouble with question five. Hit the send button and the teacher will get that directly to their inbox in their email. And um, that'll be, uh, they'll be able to respond. Um, and when they respond, you will see it here uh, or uh, no, you'll see it there once the teacher responds. Okay, it won't go back directly to your mailbox, your email. It'll go to your child's uh, Google Classroom. Um, yeah, I think, 
don't know if there's anything else. If there's any questions. So just the difference between um, when you're in the stream and when you're um, entering in a, a question to the teacher. So the stream is a great opportunity for the teacher to post something to reach the whole class or for students to engage in conversation with each other if that's what's happening at that moment with the teacher. Um, sometimes that, oper that, uh, that option is disabled. So if the teacher's not present and doesn't want the children chatting without her or him there, it can be temporarily disabled. But if you uh, create a private um, chat, like a private question, the teacher will always get that in real time. So that, that won't be disabled. So if there's something that you wanna ask and you can't do it through the stream, then do it through the private option and the teacher will get back to you. So if there's a synchronous lesson going on and uh, you know it's a 45 minute, 50 minute lesson, um, for the teacher to actually, you know, talk for 45 minutes, that wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen face to face. Sorry, Lisa. Lisa, you're muted. How long have I been muted? <laughs> Not very long. Not too long. Okay. So, um, so if you want to reach the teacher and the chat has been disabled because the teacher's not available to field the comments, she will or he will get the private conversation, like the private chat, and they will get back to you. So if it's a lesson that's synchronous and, and you may not see the teacher on the children work on something that the teacher has already explained and has given them independent work time, I have 14. then um, if you do a private yep. chat, the teacher will get back to you in real time because she will be present during the time. If it happens to be during uh, like a French class or a music class or anything like that or health or phys ed, the teacher might wait until that period is over because that's their prep time and then they'll, they'll catch up with you later. If not, most of them will already be in front of the computer anyway. So that's the only time that you probably wouldn't see them or wouldn't hear from them is during those so Sorry, we have a quick question. Um, so someone's saying that the view seems to be different when you use the Google Classroom app. Um, is there a way to send private messages through the app? Good question. Go that to is a good question. I'm sure there is. I'm gonna go to my app. Okay. <laughs> so while well, you guys uh, do that, maybe I'll mention, um, so we do definitely recommend that the teacher, uh, sorry, that parents, you know, go into, um, into their child's Google Classroom fairly regularly, just to kind of either one, to be able to, to, to ask, oh, I see you're doing this in science, or, um, oh, did you, were you able to get that English, you know, that language assignment done, or did you have French today? Just things like that. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's always good to be able to have access uh, to, uh, to that. And, you know, keep a gentle eye on your, on what your child is, um, what their responsibilities are and, and what their assignments are. Someone responded saying, there is no place to send a private message in Google's class, only in an email. Yeah, I don't see it either. I don't yeah, know if you see it. We're just, yeah, my phone is just checking. Yeah, that's a good question. Also, I, I want to know, sorry, just to mention this, when you're done the assignment, this is the turn in button and it goes directly to the teacher's uh, inbox as well. If the teacher's uh, requested for you to create um, a, a Google Doc or a Google Slide or a Sheets or a drawing, you can just um, click here and a Google, uh, a new Google Doc will uh, open once it creates. Okay, and um, you can continue, do your work. Um, and once you're done, you can um, close it up and hit the turn in button again. Do you wanna go through that one more time? Sure. So if the teacher asks to create a uh, Google Doc or Google Slide or Google uh, Sheets, whatever he may or she may have requested in the um, uh, assignment, you can click uh, whichever one they've asked. It'll create here. And once it's done creating, you can click on it. You click on it. It'll open and you can complete the task, whatever the teacher has uh, assigned um, for uh, the assignment. And once you're done, all you need to do, it saves automatically. You don't have to hit save. 
Um, it saves uh, continuously, like every second. Um, so you don't have to save or anything. And the assignment will always be there. It doesn't matter if it, um, the, you shut off the computer, turn it back on, you don't have to save, it'll be there. And once you're done, you just hit turn in. Um, and it'll go directly to the teacher's inbox. So okay, thank you for that. there is an option to add a private comment. Uh, you have to swipe up from, you click on the assignment and there's a little swipe up arrow. If you swipe up, it says add private comment. And then the teacher will get it in, on their end. So, um, Rick, so just, I, I mean, I can't, it's hard to show you this, but these are all the assignments. So you click on the assignment that you're, you're looking to do. And there's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little tiny arrow right there that if you swipe up, it allows you to do a private comment. So I'm not sure he has an iPhone. I don't know uh, about, I don't know what it looks like on another phone, but maybe just try that and see if it gives you a little uh, triangle to swipe up. So that's, that's within the assignment, right? Someone said that's that. Yeah, so assignment. click on the assignment that, you're ref that you'd like to respond to or, uh, and then swipe up and it says add private comment. So if anybody, I have had parents, you know, in the last uh, few weeks ask for the, you know, certain teachers emails because they're communicating through email, which is never an issue. Um, just, you know, ask us. Most of it is pretty simple. It's our first name, dot, last name, at t or, uh, dot, or at tcdsb.org. Um, mm -hmm. Some people have, you know, hyphenated names and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. where that is, uh, is different. Just reach out to one of your admins um, and glad to uh, share the email addresses of our um, of our group. Um, right. Okay. Um, I think Salif, maybe we'll see if anyone has any questions. Sure. And then we'll go on to the next slide. And then if you have any questions, just type them in. We'll, we'll do our best to answer them. You want to stop sharing? Yeah. And then I'll share the next one. So, um, So, um, so the next one that um, I thought we would just review is Google Meet. Um, so I am by no means an expert. Um, uh, teachers would be far better experts than I would, but I'm going to just navigate and show you a couple of, of ways of, of entering and exiting and sometimes why you see what you see um, and how to change your view and things like that. Um, it is a little bit different from Zoom. So I'm gonna let Mr. Rollison is our Zoom expert, tech expert actually. Um, I'll let him kind of dive into that for you. But um, I was gonna show you video, but then I thought it's probably better if I just show you, um, if I just actually show you myself how to navigate through. Uh, so let me see where I put. Okay, so um, this is a Google Classroom that we created for teachers. Uh, we dump things in there that we think uh, are exciting or interesting or, or professional uh, reading, um, things that they can do with their students, whatever it is that we're working on. And it's kind of a work in progress. We, we just sort of started it up recently. So we're slowly adding to it. Um, so on every uh, Google Classroom, uh, you'll see one of these, which is a Google Meet link. Um, if you don't see it, it's because the teacher has hit it. So it's not like Zoom where you create it, it's always there. So if the teacher is not doing a live meet with her students or his students, then he doesn't or she doesn't wanna show that link because we don't want the students in there unsupervised, right? So if you don't see it, it just means that there's no meet to be done and you're working on something else. If you do see it, typically the teacher will open up at a time that he or she is doing a, a Zoom, uh, a Google Meet lesson where the, they'll do like a kind of like a Zoom where they'll see everybody face to face. So if I click on it, and I have to tell you like just before we started, everything on my computer froze, I got booted out. <laughs> so I don't know, it's kind of, it's a little bit slow. It's part of the technology is great when it works. That's my motto. Okay, so um, so here you'll see that it's that it's starting. It says no one else is here. I'm the only one here. When there's other people in the Google Meet, you'll see like you know five or six participants. Um, so I'm gonna join. 
I believe my camera is going to fail because um, I'm on I'm on Zoom. So I know you can't, Mr. Rose, and I think you can't do both at the same time because I've tried that before. Yeah. So I need to get on on another device or something, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. So you're not going to see me. So basically, okay, this is about so. Typically you would see, I would be on there, right? And so I'm talking, um, if I wanted to mute myself, there's the mute button at the bottom. There is the button in the middle, which ends the call. And then there's the video. So the video, it won't give me access to do the video. Um, I'll just show you um, if I was going to, or the students wanted to share their screen, um, you have the option just like you do in Zoom um, by clicking on this present now button. And if you click your entire screen and it takes you to a pop-up window, and if I click on this and click share, then I would be sharing my screen through Google Meet, just like I'm sharing with you now through Zoom. So teachers might give students the option to share something that they're working on that they want to show their, their, their peers, or the teacher might share in order to do like a Jamboard or something like that. So that's what that feature does. And then there's also um, the opportunity up here that if you want to see who's in the call with you, uh, it's just me. So you would see a list of, of um, names here. And the features are similar. I, I, I am more comfortable with Zoom um, uh, just because I've used it more often. Um, but there is a chat option, just like you would chat in Zoom. So the same thing. So if the, if the students had any questions and the teacher was teaching, they would do it the exact same way. So um, that's pretty much it for Zoom. There really isn't much more behind it. Um, I'm going to end this call and move this over. Now, sometimes what happens with Zoom and what we've noticed, and you might have seen it in the media and things like that, is that um, uh, the teacher will get booted for whatever reason, and the kids are in there. <laughs> without without anybody it just happens sometimes or students will get will get booted and what i've even noticed is that i've joined uh, many classes uh, for zoom or for google meet and every throughout the class kids are constantly exiting and entering and for the first little while i was like why do they keep leaving and coming back but then i realized no sometimes it's just a connectivity issue where they just and so they just have to keep popping back in so it happens to all of us um so typically this is why when you when you're on your, your um, I'll go back to it for a second. Hold on. When you're on the homepage, why if you don't see the link? Because it's just, it's always there and open and we just don't want, want anyone to be on there without uh, an adult supervising or anything like that. So it'll often be hidden until it needs to be used. Zoom is Zoom when it's a scheduled meeting. So there's a start time, there's an end time. Uh, if you try and get into it before the start time, you end up in the waiting room. So, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, so, so for me, anyways, it's a little easier to navigate. So um, I'm not sure if you have any questions uh, regarding, clicking. I don't think so, regarding that, but um, feel free to um, just throw them in the chat or even just unmute yourself. Um, everyone's being very, very quiet. One of the questions I had was, um, do other, basically around the lines of, um, do the itinerant teachers um, who use Zoom, how can we communicate with them? So my response was, um, and it should be to, to everyone, that yeah. either the music teacher like Mr. Rollison or, you know, our gym teachers um, or the French teacher, they either have their own Google Classroom, um, that your child would have been invited to, to, to know. Um, but sometimes what they do is they still post the Zoom link on the actual classroom page um, just for easier access. Um, so it's either or, I would say that, the, and if there's assignments, they either, again, post it through that particular classroom or that teacher's classroom, or they have their own. So if you're unsure, I would definitely send either them a message or your teacher, your, your child's teachers um, a message. I know there's a lot of students who um, in the older grades um, who were not necessarily signing in. And, you know, we're just, we wanna make sure that we keep to the schedule so that the students are getting French, um, you know, music. Music, yeah. Are, are definitely 
you know, putting a lot of effort into their lessons and they are, you know, synchronous with their, uh, with your children. Mm -hmm. So um, also just to let you know, these um, slides, so I was telling Ms. Obey earlier, like slide three and slide five are live links to tutorials, like video tutorials. So um, Ms. Obey will share this with everyone. And then on your own time, if you wanted to go back and watch the tutorial, um, there's more information that you can get and things like that. It'll take you to other links as well. So um, they're all live. I just, we just thought it would be better if we, we showed you in real time um, so we can navigate to see exactly what you see. So, but they're great videos. They're excellent tutorials. Um, so slide, yeah, slide three and slide five are, are both live. Um, okay, so we'll keep going. And then again, if you have any questions, just continue to write them. So um, this slide is uh, in relation to Zoom. So Mr. Rolis and I'm going to stop share. And where are you? There you are. Do you have the ability to share? Yes, I do. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so um, very similar uh, in terms of the way that uh, Zoom works. So I won't go over a lot of the same details. I think one of the most important things is how your children would access a meeting. And so um, for me, when I'm using Zoom, you're going to find, and it's not showing up right now, but there's going to be a link. And that link, let me just start this again. So the teacher is going to paste this link somewhere and what's your, your child can either click on the link. And what I've been finding is a lot of our students either have success with that or don't. And then there's a secondary way to join the meeting. And I think that's important because the students that are struggling the most with joining a live Zoom meeting, because it technically is not as simple as Google Meets is, because Google Meets is integrated into the classroom. That's not true about Zoom. So students are, are clicking on an external link, even though it is still a board um, program. And so they either click that link to go to the meeting or they can use this meeting ID. And if they go to their Zoom uh, app that's on their computer or if they're on a phone, because a lot of them are accessing these meetings from their phone, um, they can use that meeting ID that you see on your screen. And that's another way for them to access the meeting. Uh, generally speaking, once they're actually in the meeting, um, uh, they're really, really good at navigating the controls. The controls within Zoom are superior to meets in what the, the teacher can do, as in we can ask students to unmute and mute. We can turn videos on and off. Students can interact with those things in the same way. Um, but as, as a teacher, I have the ability to control when I want all those things to happen. And sometimes that's really helpful. So if I'm in the middle of a lesson and I'm using something called a breakout room, which I use quite a lot in Zoom, and that sort of leaves my room, my classroom, if you will, more unsecure because I'm going into a breakout room, I turn off all those abilities. So students can unmute themselves, students can't chat with themselves if you're working on something and i've only got a couple of them in a breakout room then i isolate that when i come back i turn those controls back on so a lot of teachers are doing that uh, i think we're past the place where um, we had to have authentication when it came to joining and so a lot of our students are joining now as either a tcdsb.ca account or some students are joining as a guest account because they're joining from their parents computers or siblings are using the same devices or again as i said a lot of students are joining on cell phones cell phones or um tablets especially and so I'm not sure how how many of the actual tools related to Zoom we need to go into uh, but I can certainly help with any questions that do come up. Uh, the mute and the stop video are really simple for students. If they're on a tablet they literally just use their finger to slide across the screen and that will change their view so they can go from just seeing the teacher to seeing their class if all their classmates have their video on it's fairly simple to do that um unlike meets where the 
on the main screen of Meets, the hand up feature is there. That isn't the same when you're on a tablet in Zoom. You have to press the three dots, which then give you the option to put your hand up. Uh, students use that a lot, um, even when I don't want them to, and they're just going to unmute if they want to. But um, it all depends on what kind of lesson's going on. Um, the other nice thing about Zoom is that a teacher can control the ability for a student to screen share. So when they go into breakout rooms, I can give them that if I choose to. Um, and I find that really helps the meeting become really secure. Uh, so that's, that's generally how I use Zoom. Um, I find Zoom to be really great and I know the students are really enjoying it. Um, there's also some emoji interaction tools within Zoom that a lot of teachers are using and that, that allows students to have a good time and, and sort of engage uh, in a different way that they can't necessarily. And then obviously breakout rooms, which are um, wonderful. And so we've been using those a lot. And so I'm happy to take any questions that come up. Um, if people want to see Zoom controls, it's a little bit difficult to do that on an actual computer feed, uh, but I can try and show that later. Thank you, Mr. Rollison. Any questions, Ms. Obey? We'll go on to the next slide. So um, this slide, I'm going to show you in presentation mode because I feel like it has to be bigger. So um, these are steps that I took today to upload from my phone. So um, the devices are great. Uh, I only know how to use an iPhone, so I, I don't. I'm, I'm going to assume it's similar with the other phones. Um, but I will show you how to take something that you have on your phone and upload it directly to the drive. So it saves you the step of having to even open your computer, which is amazing. So if your child has, um, if you've taken a picture of something or there's an image or a document that's on your phone that your child wants to share, um, you have to download, um, so I'm gonna just show you right here. So right here, this uh, drive icon. So you want to download that to your desk, to your iPhone or to your phone, to your tablet, whatever it is that you're using. And um, just keep it handy. Like I always keep it on the front at the bottom because I use it a lot. When you click on it, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. I was in something. I was, I was actually in this presentation uh, with Mr. Grassi. We were working on it. Um, but otherwise you might have a screen that just has folders, right? But your this is your drive. So whatever the last thing you opened in your drive is, that's what's gonna come up. There's a little button here, this little plus sign. You wanna click on that. When you click on that, it's gonna take you to this and it's gonna give you these options, right? It's gonna give you these options. So you maybe wanna up, um, upload a folder, create a new folder. You wanna upload something, you wanna use your camera. Um, and then you have the icons for um, G Suite, which are the Google Docs, the Google Sheets, and the Google Slides. So for the purposes of this tutorial, you want this button here, you want to upload, right? So you're going to click on upload. When you click on upload, you get this. And when you see this, um, it basically is asking you where you want to upload from. Do you want to browse or do you want to upload for, from your photos and videos? So I'm wanting to upload from my photos and videos. And when I click photos and videos, I get this. A lot of pictures, so I get this. And then I clicked on recents because the picture that I wanted to upload was in my recents. When you click that, you get the thumbnails of all the pictures, right? And then you scroll. And then if you can see this picture right here with this little blue check mark. That's the picture that I'm choosing to upload. So you can choose to upload as many, whatever you want. You could do multiple, you could just do one. Um, so you, you select the ones you wanna upload. And when you check mark it with this little blue check mark, you go back up here and you click upload. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you do that, the last thing you're gonna see is all pending uploads have completed. So then you know it's it's already in your drive. That's it, it's there. So there's nothing else you have to do. And you can move things from, I don't know if we wanna show that as well, but you can move things from your drive or from Google Doc or from Google Slide. 
to something else, like to another folder. You can move things back and forth. There's like a little drop down menu that actually just says move and you can move it wherever you want. Um, so anyways, when you do this, it's gonna be, it's gonna be in your drive and it'll be in your recents. And if you open up your drive, you'll see that the picture or the, the doc or whatever it was that you uploaded will be there. So it just kind of saves you the, the extra step, right? So super handy. Um, there's another way to do it as well, but that's probably the easiest way I would think. Ms. Obe, what do you think? I know you do. Um, yeah, no, someone just said, um, how do students submit printed work? So this is, you know, so, a great way. Go ahead. Yeah, no, so I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, and I, I mean, I probably sometimes do things the long way just because, but my first instinct would be, okay, so I have this worksheet, this piece of paper, I need to get it to the teacher. I, I take a picture, it's an image. You could take a picture and submit it that way. Uh, that would be the easiest. And then you would just follow these steps, right? So you would yeah. click on your drive, click on the, the plus sign and upload from your images, click on the image, and then you just, you send it that way. I don't know, Ms. Obey, what do you think? Is there? Yeah, no, definitely taking that. And then um, I also mentioned to you yesterday, um, scanning. there's also, um, you know, being able, there's a feature on our phones um, of a, it's called a photo scan and you just download it everybody has it so you just type in in the search photo scan and then you easily take a picture um and then it just, it's in your in your documents as well and that's for i guess other things if you wanted to create a, a workable pdf which i'm not sure if we're going to get to um definitely i think the key thing there mr franco is like you said just it's it's simple and and fast so once you Get the hang of it it's unbelievable it's just it takes two seconds first few times navigating yeah. once once you get the hang of it it's um it's quite fast and the kids can easily you, do it yeah you also have the option i mean i don't have a picture of it but i'll just kind of maybe walk through it but so um i don't know i have this random i'm gonna actually just stop sharing for a minute oh no i'll leave it like this so no i'll stop sharing hold on okay so i have this like random picture it's there's nothing. It's just maybe I'll just do a real picture if you could see. Hold on. Okay. Lots of pictures of computers. Okay, cake. So I have this picture of, of cake, right? And it's in my camera roll. And if I click on it, I have um, you know, the download that the very corner, it's the box with the arrow pointing up. If I click on that and I scroll, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, that's a great. Yeah, There's, if you scroll, you'll see like I have my drive at like when I scroll, so I can also upload it that way too. So I wish I could show you. I'm sorry, I don't know. And if it's and if it's not there, sometimes you just have to click more, more. and then yeah. and it'll show. Yeah, so that's an that easy way, way to add a lot of things. If I change all of a sudden, it's on your it's on your Google yeah. Drive. If I change the view in a speaker view. You, can you see it like this? No? No, no. <laughs> no okay, okay, I tried. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, so it's a little box with an arrow. So when you click on a picture and you'll see that box automatically shows up. If you click on that, you'll see you can you can send it as a, like a, you can upload, you can send it to your drive, you can email it to yourself, you can send it as a text, like there's, you have options. So, but again, you have to have that on your phone, right? So the first thing you have to do is download the Google Drive, right, as an app onto your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, uh, oh, we have one more, I'll just screen share. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt us. Um, so uh, I found this on the web and I just thought, I, I just really liked it because I'm also guilty of saying to my kids, you know, what did you learn in school today, right? How many times do we ask that question? Um, so just, uh, I'm just going to highlight a couple that um, I thought were a nice way of asking your child, what did they do without asking them, what did they do? Because oftentimes we get the same answer, which is nothing. <laughs> it did nothing. It was fine. It was good, right? So um, I love the first one. So when did you notice yourself, sorry, when did you notice yourself most interested and curious today? So what piqued your curiosity, right? So what was most interesting? When were you most engaged? I love that question. And that, that seems to be a hot topic, you know, student engagement, right? So it's a, it's a hot topic in education. So 
what did you notice yourself most interested and curious today? So when was that? What point of the day? What were you learning about? It also helps you to get to know your child in a different way. Um, what does a successful day at school look like to you? And what does it feel like? That's a big question, but it's a super reflective question that I bet you'd be surprised at some of the answers you might get. And we don't often ask kids that, right? What's a successful day to you? What does that look like to you? Um, so I like that question. And the last one uh, that I just wanted to share is, when did you surprise yourself today? And they're gonna have to think about that because that's a big question of when did I surprise myself in what way, which creates conversation. And that's what we want with our kids, right? What does that, what do you mean surprise myself? So that sort of is a sneaky way of getting to know a little bit more about what happened during the day if you've been working yourself and you weren't able to be present. So um, kind of piques their curiosity. I don't know what that means. What do you mean surprise myself? So just a few interesting, uh, you know, ways to ask your kids, um, you know, what did you do without saying, what did you do? Um, so again, this is uh, in the slide presentation that um, we'll share with you um, and you can kind of read it at, at your leisure. Yeah. And that is the end. <laughs> so I think Mr. Rollison was going to show uh, one extra feature called can. Sure. So um, I, this is more personal, um, but so in, in my home board where I'm from, uh, my kids are getting lots and lots of PDF printouts from their teacher. And I know this is happening um, somewhat for junior and younger, not so much in intermediate where the teachers are using Google Classroom all the time, but we have a wonderful app uh, and the app is called Cami, and it's an extension to Google Chrome. And there's two ways to use it. I'm just gonna show you a really simple like I downloaded the PDF and I'm going to show you how to use Cami. There's another way to do it where it's actually full integration from the teacher side, but that's a bit more onerous. Um, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like from if you went and downloaded Cami and what that would look like specifically. And I'm just going to do a screen share here to show you that. Okay, so if you download Kami, K-A-M-I, from any of the app stores, so the Google Chrome store, uh, that's all I did. As soon as you do that in your extensions widget up here in the corner, so I'm just going to draw a circle around it where the puzzle piece is. When you've installed it, you have to go and you have to pin it. And this won't matter in terms of whether they're logged in with their school account which is one thing that's really important when you're using Google services um, and anything in their G Suite. Uh, but the nice thing about Cami is, and this is Cami, the platform that you're looking at here. If you wanted to open from computer, let's just say any PDF here, I don't know here. Here's a fact sheet that we got. No, let's not open that, hold on. It'll just let you open any PDF document from either Google Drive. So if they have enabled it with Google Drive, it can be directly from um, their Google Drive. Or if it's not from their Google Drive, they can upload it directly from their computer. So I'm just going to here, for example, is a PDF document. The way that Cami works, and I find it really helpful, it has a text box tool here. And so if students had to write in an assignment, and that used to get printed out and they do it by hand and they take a picture. In, instead of that, students can use Cami and the text box tool and they'll be able to write directly onto their assignment. There's tons and tons of features in here uh, and I'm happy to talk about them uh, over and over again, but this is just the easiest way. So if, you, if your kids need to be able to type into a document and that would be how we would do that then and when you're done you would just press the save or the download button up here in the corner and it will download everything they wrote on the screen and they could just upload that to the drive instead of having to do the printing and the taking the picture so that's a really really simplistic view of that um you're more than welcome to contact me if you're having some issues with that or you want help with that program um i'm hoping to roll that out more school-wide in the next little while because it's such a a great program. So I just um, added that to the slides. So I added the link and that's slide 12. Yeah. So you can just click on that. It's a live link. 
Yeah, no, definitely. Because I think we, we don't want parents yeah. to print and all these tags. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a waste mm -hmm. of paper. Sometimes you're running out of ink. You know, mm -hmm. and it only requires your child to write, uh, you know, very minimal. So um, definitely something we should um, maybe do like a step-by-step -step and share that with the parents over the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also just, I'm just going to put it out there in the chat too. Does anybody want to see any more features of Google Classroom? Like, or like how to share Google Doc or, or things like that. I know we're at all at different levels, um, but if there's something specific that you want us to show you in um, in Google, um, you know, please put it in the chat. I know even uh, Christina De Silva's on here, and we were I was showing her how to share a document so that we could both work on it. Um, so something you know extremely useful, and and a lot of your your children are doing that with um, with. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they have a, you know, a project that they're working on together collectively and they both have access. Um, so it's, uh, it's very useful. I can actually show you really quickly. Um, okay, sure. Yeah, so let me uh, give you a slide. Okay, so, so this is my drive and um, I'm gonna just, um, I don't know, let me just, um, I'll take this, for example, I'll take this presentation. I'm gonna open it. <clears throat> and this this is the same for regardless of you're doing if you're doing a Google slide or if you're doing a Google Doc, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing. It's the same steps. So you could be in Excel, like Google Excel or um, Google Forms, whatever it is that you're working on. So you have all these options at the top, right? So if I go to file, there's a couple of options, but I'll show you this. So you have options to uh, make a copy. You can duplicate the copy, which is always important if you want to keep the original, but then make changes. You can import certain slides. So let's say you only want to take slides one, two, and three. Just make sure that when you um, go out of it that you highlight, so you hold control uh, down and you highlight. So see how one, two, and three are highlighted. And I just maybe want to import those. That's it, nothing else, right? So just make sure that you do that if you import. Uh, you can email it to yourself. And when you email it to yourself, you actually have the choice of emailing it to yourself as a PDF. In this case, it would be, um, you have the choice of PDF. And you also, because it's a Google slide, you have the choice of also um, emailing it to yourself as a PowerPoint. So it'll come to you and it'll, it'll convert itself into a PowerPoint and it'll end up in your email. So th those are great options. Um, and then I'm just wondering, if for, okay, here we go. I wasn't showing up before. So um, this little button here, this is my favorite button. This one and this one are my favorite. So. I get a lot of things shared with me. Some things I want to keep handy and other things I'm fine to have it in my shared folder. Uh, so if it's something important that Ms. Obey has shared with me and I'm like, uh-oh, I better learn this inside out. She's going to ask me. Um, I add a shortcut to my drive. So your drive is like your personal drawer. It's like it's your drawer. It's yours. It, it has your things in it, the most important things for you. Your shared is where you can dump lots of other stuff in it, but things in your drive should be important to you. Anyways, that's where I would do add shortcut. But this little button here, move, you can move it to another folder. So if I click move, I now have the option of moving it somewhere else. So it's uh, taking its time right now, but it'll give you options if you wanna move it into a different folder, if you want to move it into a different, um, Wait for the options to come up. Very slow. Let's try again. We'll try one more time and then I'll show you one more feature. I'm very impatient sometimes. Okay, here we go. So, um, so right away, uh, it's coming up my drive because that's where this is. This is in my drive. Um, so I want to move it. So I'm going to move it to uh, my classroom folder, which is also on my drive, but it's a folder on my drive. So I'm going to click on that arrow. And then I have all of these that come up. Maybe I want to put it in my daily five folder or my grade seven and eight folder, wherever you want to 
put it, you click on that and then you click move here and then it's going to ask you again and you say move and it'll move it for you. Um, so if you have things rather than making copy of things and thinking you have to do it that way, just move things over to your drive that are important to you. And if you want to share it, you have that little option here of sharing it with another student or with the teacher or with whoever it is that you're working. This is great for the older kids who work on projects together. Um, if they've created slides and they each wanna be responsible for a portion of the presentation or the project that they're working on, uh, they would share it. So this, is, this presentation is shared with uh, everybody that you see here. And you can share it with them using their TCDSB username. So um, most kids would at this point obviously know because that's how you have to log in. And then uh, you can share it with them. If you want them to edit it, they would be editor. If you wanted them to look at it, but not do anything, you would change them to a view only. And then that way, when they open it, they could just look at it, but they can't actually do anything to it. So you actually have the choice. You only have that choice if you are the creator, if you're the owner. If you're not the owner, you, you, you take what you get. <laughs> However, it's been shared with you. Um, yeah, so, so there, there's a few cool features, especially for, you know, kids who are um, starting to work on things together collaboratively, even though we're working remotely. Um, I know there's a lot of things happening where kids are, are having to work with one another collaboratively. So virtually, this, this is the best way to do it. And uh, they can do it in real time, right? They can, just like we're doing it now, they can do the same thing that we're doing. They could be on Zoom or they could be on their on FaceTime and then work on it together. So that's always a great option, I think, right? So that's a lot of information. I don't know how much of it you probably already know or some of it is new learning and it's all good. Just um, Perfect, thank you. We have one other question, uh, just talking about breakout rooms. So, um, so teachers do try to create breakout rooms. Um, some are learning how to use it effectively, um, and you know others are using it regularly. Um, and it definitely, you know, we are also encouraging as administrators, encouraging the teachers to use it as a form of, you know, an opportunity for students to to talk. Um, so there are moments though where you know the the teachers will create um, the breakout rooms, and and it's like crickets. Um, so kids also need to, to know that, you know, kind of get used to it. So we're hoping the more that they use it, uh, the more that they'll be um, comfortable uh, chatting. Uh, the other thing was that if your child is, I think I mentioned it at our last um, CSPC meeting, my dog, um, was that if your child is, you know, missing out on the social piece, if that, uh, you know, we can always connect you, your, your, we can as administrators or your teachers can, can always connect you with um, the other parents. So it would just be a matter of us asking, do you want, is it okay if we share um, your email with, let's say, you know, if, if it was Mr. Grassi had a child in your, in your class, so we would be like, Mr. Grassi, here's so-and-so's email. Um, they would like to maybe reach out and, and organize a little, you know, they could even have a little, a Zoom little meeting as well, the kids, or they could do it just a FaceTime as well. So, because we know that's a huge part um, that the kids are missing. Um, so if we can do anything to support that, we um, we definitely will and we can. Okay, uh, we have a, a question about Jamboard. So um, how, how does Jamboard get used? So I, I'm not the person to ask, Mr. Rollison. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Jamboard, there's a whole bunch of different ways that Jamboard can get used. Um, and if everybody doesn't know, well, um, you probably don't all know what Jamboard is. Um, Jamboard is like a big live interactive whiteboard space. And it can be used in, in ways of, I'm going to bring one up and just show everybody what a Jamboard looks like. Um, and if it's it usually used in Google Meet, right? That's where I've used, like I've tried to use it in Google Meet. I have had some difficulties. I know it's an amazing tool. Uh, yes, it can be used yeah. anywhere. And so I'll just okay. bring up, I'll just bring up one quickly here. Okay. It's um, a great tool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And so here, here's an example. Um, yeah. Jamboard is, so 
it, what what happened in this situation and i'm pretty brave when i use jamboard um because i literally put all 25 of my students on the same document and we all edit in real time together so i've done it in a whole bunch of different ways but jamboard is exactly what you see here so if i go to a blank screen uh teachers can either assign certain students to a page and those students go to that page and that's where they're allowed to interact with each other uh, you can co-create something so if i had something that i on this screen and i wanted them all to comment on it i could just use what's called the sticky note and all the students would be able to in real time um, comment on the document in some cases that works really, really well. Um, another thing that I did with Jamboard was each student had their own page in Jamboard. They had to navigate to that page and then they did an assignment inside Jamboard. Um, but that's exactly what it is. It's a big space where you know they can draw on the screen. I can teach from there, but it's a really great collaborative space. And it, it shares really well with Zoom and it interacts a lot it directly with uh, Jam Jamboard interacts directly with um, the G Suite. So any of the Google Meet. So is it an extension, Mr. Rollison? Miami, is it an extension? No. Uh, no, it's it's an automatic part of our G Suite. So all the, all, all the students have access to it. And, uh, and there's so many things that the board actually has enabled for us that we're only sort of scratching the surface of. Um, and, and that's one of them. Jamboard is wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. It is a great tool. Um, Okay, we have another question about, um, is there a dictation feature that would type from a student's voice? Do we wanna show them read and write? There's, yeah, that's a big question. Yeah, um, so there is- I actually, you know what, that's a really good thing. We can actually, I have a printout. I'll send that out to the parents as okay. well on how to install read and write. Okay. Um, Cause that's definitely a great tool. I think who installed it? I was on somebody's chat and or somebody's class and they either grade fours or grade threes. Actually grade threes, Miss well, it's an excellent tool. I don't know, Stephen, do you want to show them? We can not not probably not right now. It's a huge tool. It is, eh? yeah. But yeah. but yeah. um but it should be noted and I'm gonna I think I'll do a parent tutorial for Cami. Inside Cami, there is a all those features of read and write as well, and so students can listen to documents. They can they can type out their documents. One of the cool things about Cami that I really like is that if a student submits something for me using Cami, I can I can leave a video message back to them, and it goes back to them through Cami. So. Um, I would say yes, read and write, which is a really simplistic tool and it's really simple to use, but it would probably take us 30 minutes to walk through how to use it. Um, but yes, there are ways to do that. Very good. That's a great question. So I think we can add that then, Ms. Obey, to the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, Perfect. And also just with, I know usernames and passwords, sometimes a lot of parents uh, reach out like, ah, I don't know what the password. So if something does happen, your child, you know, has, has got, got locked out, um, just contact us. We've actually all become very, very, very great at just going in quickly and, um, and resetting it. booting it, resetting the, uh, the passwords. Yeah. Um, don't hesitate, uh, you yeah. know, bother. We'd rather you know, you get it, uh, reset it as soon as possible so that the kids can be actively on there during the day. I've had a couple questions come in on my side. Um, so question came in, is there a reason why Google Hangouts is disabled for students? It limits the ability for students to collaborate on projects and homework. All I can say is that it's a board decision. Um, and it's, I, I'm, I, my personal opinion would be that it's 100% related to student safety uh, because if, if that was enabled, it would be a place that students could use without supervision. And so there are lots of ways that teachers during the school day are creating safe places for your children to do that. Um, I don't think Google Hangouts would be the place to do that without any kind of supervision. And then I had another point about the login. And I think it's important to know um, if students aren't logged in with their TCDSB account, it is possible that some of the features that we've talked about tonight don't work. And it's also possible that uh, they wouldn't be able to access the Zoom TCDSB links if the teacher hasn't enabled the guest mode. 
Um, and so I've been working really hard over the last little bit to make sure that teachers all understand how to handle the guest mode. Uh, and, but it's important for parents to understand because I had another comment that came in. Uh, if, if you get rid of that authentication piece, isn't it, isn't it open for Zoom bombing? And the answer is no, because there's still a waiting room. And there's still the ability to remove a student and put them back in the waiting room if you don't know who they are. I don't let students come into my meeting if I don't know who they are. So they have to make sure their name is displayed as somebody I recognize. Teachers are seeing students every day, nonstop. So they know who's coming into their meetings. We haven't had any kind of security problems like that. Um, and that's the reason why. And then I had another question just about the app, Cami. The, app, the app's called Cami. It's just a Google extension. I added the, the extension link onto the presentation with the title Cami. So you can click on it. It's a live link. And if when you if you're going to install Cami, it'll it'll ask you to pick a Google account. If they pick their school Google account, um, that'll that should come up automatically as long as they're logged in. That's the best thing to do because if it if we do end up with some integration, then it will automatically show up on their classrooms and they'll be able to submit assignments through Cami. If they do it through like a different username, then they'll have to go and change where the Cami is going. So it'd be easiest just to go through and set it up through their school account. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. Okay. Well, I think on that note, um, again, parents, we totally recognize that this is a lot um, and that, you know, in between working and making, you know, meals and cleaning and navigating through all of this, we completely understand that this is a challenge and it's very, very stressful. So again, we're here to support at any time, you know, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, your children are becoming extremely resilient and they are becoming so savvy on the- on So the savvy. Um, <laughs> They're it's, quick, it's a lot quicker than we are, yeah. Yeah, so just to see little, you know, four-year-olds, six-year-olds just navigate all around is just, uh, it's incredible. So. Julie, one that, day. that reminded sorry, that? sorry that reminded me of something that came up at one of our staff meetings um and that some teachers have enabled for younger kids the ability for the teacher to be able to control the microphones and just mm -hmm. to note that if um if your child is logging into the meeting and they get a request giving permission for the teacher to control mm -hmm. their microphone uh, especially in the younger grades, then that means that if that teacher wants the student to unmute, it'll happen automatically. There won't be anything that displays on the screen. This is specifically for Zoom. So the older kids are fine. When you say, yeah, go ahead and unmute, they're fine. If you're in SK or grade one, there's, uh, there is the ability in Zoom for the teacher to be able to have control of the microphone, but the parent has to enable it at the beginning of the session. So just look for that because I know the teachers are using it and it'll be, um, it's like a little warning message that comes up when you log in, um, either giving permission for the fact that the host can control your microphone. And I know that was really, really helpful for some of our elementary, like some of our younger teachers. And another thing I'm going to just um, recommend, if your child is, you know, struggling a little bit, maybe a little bit older, and um, you want us to maybe sit with them, we can easily set up a Zoom and do any of this with them as well. So Absolutely, yeah. we really want the children to be actively involved in the day and realize that this is school. It just looks different, but it is same schedule, um, you know, similar expectations. I'm not going to say the same expectations, but similar mm -hmm. expectations. Um, and we just want them engaged. So if there's a problem with technology, um, you know, we have no problem setting up a little Zoom one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe they're too shy to ask. Maybe they're just, you know, oh, it's okay, I can do it. But if they're missing out on learning, we, uh, we don't want that to happen. So again, please reach out. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, I think uh, we'll continue to share. We don't know how long this is going to be, so, but we'll continue sharing little tips. And we do really appreciate uh, all of your participation. And uh, again, just reach out to us, we're available. Thank you, Mr. Grassi, Mr. Franco, Mr. Rollison, and uh, stay well. And we will see you all soon. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.